Hi everyone, uh, my name's Ollie and this is Alicia and this is going to be another HMO conversion vlog. Uh, we're doing this for a client of ours who um, we're actually doing next door for them as well and surprisingly they told us that they bought this one as well. So um, yeah, there's been a few complications with next door so we had to sort of shift the builders over to this one but I'll let Alicia explain all of it. Uh, in a lot more detail and then we'll show you around. Uh, the guys have already got in here and, and ripped out before we could do any filming so it isn't how it was bought if that makes sense. I'd like to try and get in before then but we couldn't. Uh, but I'll let Alicia explain the details of this project. Yeah so as Ollie says I'm going to walk you around. Now I'm going to start at the front of the property just because. Um, so this was the lounge and we were going to turn it into one bedroom with a with an ensuite there because you'll see there's a um, downstairs toilet there, so there's already drainage in this part of the building um so it was going to be quite a big bedroom and then we thought mm, no because we were going to then we thought about making this the communal space but then it would have no external light so we, we went round and round in circles and what we've eventually decided is that we're going to turn this because it's so big into the kitchen lounge diner um and yeah, so it's gonna. I'm not quite sure of the exact layout at the moment, but it, there is enough space in here to be able to fit all the amenities that we need a sofa area um, and obviously a dining area as well. So that's the plan for this bit. I hope you agree. It obviously makes better use of such a big room rather than cutting it up when you haven't actually got the light to give to wherever you sort of make the internal space. So that. Actually, sorry, I'll show you this bit because this leads, this bit at the moment houses the gas meter and the electricity meter. So we're going to relocate that. Um, and then that obviously backs on to this downstairs toilet. So we're going to knock through that wall and we're going to have a shower at the end, a toilet. We're going to obviously turn the toilet and the basin as well. So this will be a downstairs bathroom for two tenants to share. So if I now show you into these two bits, so this is where one bedroom will be. So this was the kitchen, um, and it's gonna be turned into one bedroom. And then the room that we started in, which is just here, is obviously gonna be the other bedroom. So this bedroom will be accessed through the doorway that we just walked through. And this one will obviously go straight into the lounge kitchen diner, and so therefore we'll need an exit point here. So we'll have its own garden, um, external door onto the garden to meet fire eggs. Um, so that's these two rooms. Now, as you can see, because these are now two bedrooms, the access to the garden has now been put inside two bedrooms. So how are we gonna let the rest of the tenants upstairs, how are they going to get out into the garden? So we came up with an idea. We'll take you back to the entrance hall. As you can see, this is quite a wide space. So what we're going to do, we're going to move the front door to here, and we're going to have a back door here, and then in between them, outside, we're going to have a fence or gate panel or something like that. So that means that in the summer months, tenants can potentially come out, use this back door to go out to the garden, potentially leave it open because they'll have a bit of security with the, um, with the gate here. Obviously, we did sort of think about, well, they could get round to the garden through the front door, but like I said, in the summer, you kind of want to be able to leave the door open and not have to be worrying about security. So that then solves the issue of having a front door and a back door. And I don't know if you want to have a look, but it obviously then goes round to the back of the property. So seeing as we're also doing this property here, and obviously it's a mirror image of that one, we'll be doing the same in terms of what we do in the front door and the back door situation. So we'll end up having two gated panels here, um, and then two back doors. So it should work out really well. I think it's quite a good solution for moving things around, making best use of the big room at the front, giving the two back rooms to um, two tenants as bedrooms, and then solving the problem of going out through this way to the garden. So we come back in and go upstairs. You can show in the garden? Not really, might um, as well. Just quickly. 
just so they get an idea. It's quite simple really isn't it? It's going to be leaving the floor. Yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't spoken to the, to the client yet about what they want to do out here. Um, I mean, they've obviously got the patio area. Whether they'd want to add any greenery, I don't know. Um, so yeah, we'll see what they'd like to do there. Let's go upstairs. So let's go upstairs. So this is the first bedroom. This is the biggest bedroom. Um, and not only is it the biggest, but it's right next door to the bathroom. The bathroom is right here. So the idea in here is that we're going to do an ensuite, probably coming this way, because that's what we're doing in the other property. So you, you'll end up with a walkway, which I hate walkways because they're just a waste of space normally, but it does seem to make the best use of space in this room. So we'll end up with a, an ensuite that takes up this kind of corner, and then yes, you get a little walkway. But there you go. Hang on, just a little idea. You wouldn't be able to put a door there, block this up. You'd almost come in from there and then you could have a longer way. You'd have more space. That's the bathroom, you can't get through the bathroom. True. Hmm. Carry on. That's why I do the design. <laughs> um, yeah, so then you end up with this really big, nice bedroom. Um, there's not much else we need to say in here, that's what we're doing in this property. We are having to redo the electrics in both properties because they are pretty rubbish. Um, so unfortunately that's a, a cost that the client was hoping to save, but when the electrician came round and said, no, it's, it's not safe, he wouldn't be able to sign it off, he wouldn't be able to guarantee it. Um, so in the end, I've spoken to the client and they are happy to redo all the electric, well, I'm not sure happy is the right word, but they're in agreement to do the, the to redo all the electrics, to rewire the property. Um, so this is probably the smallest bedroom, I think. Um, so this is going to share bathroom facilities with two other um, rooms in this house. So there'll be three tenants sharing one bathroom, which is, our normal standard is that we only have two tenants sharing um, one bathroom, that's the max. But this one, the, there wasn't really another way we could do it. So when we spoke to the clients, um, they, they wanted to do three showing on bathroom. Um, so obviously they then get like a six bedroom HMO. So I think it's six bedrooms um, and three bathrooms. So obviously one person gets their own suite, two downstairs share one bathroom, and then three upstairs share one bathroom, if that makes sense. Um, the difference between, probably the only difference between that house and this house is these covers that are along the hallway or the landing, um, in the other property, this opening is actually here, so it can't actually become usable for this room. But this one is actually accessed this way, so this is going to be the wardrobe, which means that I can give this room a bit more space than the other one because I don't have to accommodate a freestanding wardrobe. So if you've watched any of other vlogs, I often talk about trying to fit wardrobes into spaces like this because obviously. Besides the bed, the wardrobe is the next biggest piece of furniture in a room. So if you can, if you've got a cubby hole that's actually not doing anything, and you can actually get rid of that piece of furniture, suddenly the room looks really quite big because you're not accommodating such a large piece. And um, so this this property has got um, the wardrobe here. There's two cupboards here, which I'm not quite sure what they'll be used for. I mean, I'm not sure if the plumbers are going to need either of these cupboards for anything. Um, if not, it would probably just become storage for, for tenants. I mean, we often get a uh, cabin crew who often have suitcases and things. This is a great place to be, for them to be able to put their suitcases rather than have to store them in their bedrooms. So, yeah, this is the next bedroom, which, like the bedroom I just showed you, has got this inbuilt wardrobe cupboard area. So, again, we won't be using, we won't be putting in a freestanding wardrobe in this bedroom and um, because we just use this space really we might be able to give them an extra chest of drawers potentially because they're probably this bedroom is much bigger than that one and um, so there might be you know space for a bit of extra storage so then coming into this bedroom so this bedroom i think is pretty much the same size so remember from my plans this is pretty much the same size as that one but obviously it doesn't have 
the wardrobe cupboard thing. So we're going to have to accommodate um, a freestanding wardrobe in here. Um, again, there's not much else to say other than obviously the windows are a bit suspect, so I'm pretty sure these windows are going to have to be changed. Um, it's obviously a bit of a bodge job. <laughs> see through yeah mm. and i actually have whilst we've been here today i've actually spotted that there's a, there seems to be a hole in the roof so that's something that we'll have to be if you can see up there <laughs> all he's doing is on sound effects <laughs> so then the final space is the bathroom Oops. um so the bathroom, obviously, like I said, is going to be shared by three tenants. This box in here is the bit, I don't know if you've ever seen it in a, in a property where they obviously have the bit that goes over the stairs and there's like a, a slant. And so obviously the fashion or the trend was to put the slanted bit of the bath over the slant of the stairs. So you get the head height above the stairs, you make best use of this space, blah, blah, blah. But obviously, because we don't want to have a shower, because obviously our tenants prefer, sorry, we don't want to have a bath because our tenants prefer showers, we're going to what we're going to do and what we're going to do in the other property is build a fake wall so that we don't have to do anything with that slant and in this fake wall as much as it feels like a little bit of waste of space it will house the shower and all the pipe work and also what we'll try and do what we will do sorry is put some recessed shelving in here so that they can have somewhere to put shampoo bottles and shower gels and all that kind of stuff and then if there's space on this side as well put a bit here so you might want to put extra storage or um, obviously if there's if there's three people sharing this room then it might be nice to have three separate shelving units and everyone can have their own um, space so this will be a walk-in shower um, as we said on some of our other vlogs um, we have started to, where possible, put in these walk-in showers where they just have a pane of glass and then no moving parts, no moving, moving doors or anything because they're easier to clean and they are easier to maintain, basically. So if you can clean them better and more effectively, then there's less chance that they will have build-up of um, lime scale and, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, that's what we're putting in here. And then the toilet will go, obviously, where it is, but we might turn it 90 degrees so it faces this way and then the basin is going to go there and the radiator will end up sort of around here so when you come out you can grab your towel from the from the shower so that is pretty much everything i think um like i said because this is a, a mirror image of next door they're hoping to run the um, works sort of alongside each other now we had a problem with next door in that the only difference next door was that it had a big conservatory which we have had to take down and we were hoping to kind of incorporate it or maybe Can make you it. Can see it from here? Yeah, I think it's taking it down already. Yeah, it's gone. You guys can see out there. Yeah, so basically the plan with that one was to try and incorporate it into the house. But actually, it was such a it's such it's so badly built that it would never have passed building control so they're going to have to take it down so it was either we take it down and rebuild it or take it down and leave it down so that's what we've done and we like i said now that property is exactly the same or like a mirror image of this one so they can kind of run beside each other um so i think that's everything so i hope you have enjoyed the tour around this one and then you can see its weekly progress and we will see you next time really have a good week bye